Anyone else in a top 10 kind of mood? When we ask our Muslim friends why they believe in Islam, we hear some fascinating claims about Muhammad and the Quran. A careful examination of the facts, however, shows that these claims are based on myths that have been propagated by deceptive Islamic preachers and apologists. Here are the top 10 myths Muslims believe about Islam, Muhammad, and the Quran. Myth number 10. The Quran contains miraculous scientific insights. Given the prestige of science in the modern world, it's no surprise that Muslim apologists like Ahmed Didat and Zakir Naik, who will say virtually anything to convince people that Islam is true, would tell their listeners that science supports the Quran. In reality, the Quran is a scientific catastrophe. The Quran claims that the sun sets in a muddy pool, that semen is formed between the backbone and the ribs, that the earth is flat, that there are seven earths, that the sun orbits the earth, that human embryos are blood clots, that the sky would fall on the earth if Allah didn't hold it up, and that stars are missiles that Allah uses to shoot demons who try to sneak into heaven. Students, be sure to share these dazzling insights in your science classes. Your professors will be astonished. Myth number nine. The Quran is a literary miracle. The Quran repeatedly claims to possess a supernatural eloquence that can't be imitated by human beings. Muslim preachers and apologists take the Quran's claims for granted and insist that God alone could write something as beautiful and perfect as the Quran. In reality, the Quran is a poorly written, garbled, disorganized, incoherent mess as the Iranian scholar Ali Dashti wrote in his book 23 Years, the Quran contains sentences which are incomplete and not fully intelligible without the aid of commentaries. Foreign words, unfamiliar Arabic words, and words used with other than the normal meaning. Adjectives and verbs inflected without observance of the concords of gender and number. Illogically and ungrammatically applied pronouns which sometimes have no referent, and predicates which in rhymed passages are often remote from the subjects. These and other such aberrations in the language have given scope to critics who deny the Quran's eloquence. The only miracle here is that anyone views the Quran as a literary miracle. Myth number eight, Muhammad was sinless. Muslims are taught that Muhammad was the greatest man who ever lived. Tragically, their desire to shower their prophet with praise has led to an unprecedented amount of exaggeration, compelling many Muslims to assert that Muhammad was completely sinless. In reality, Muhammad sinned like it was a sport. Even if we ignore the things he did that we would regard as evil, having sex with a nine-year-old girl, breaking his oath to his wives, torturing a man for money, and so on, even if we ignore all of this, Islam's most trusted sources admit that Muhammad was a sinner. In the Quran, Allah orders Muhammad to ask forgiveness for your sin and tells him that he would forgive you your sins of the past and the future. In Sahih al-Bukhari, Muhammad declares, by Allah, I seek Allah's forgiveness and turn to him in repentance for more than 70 times a day. Muhammad needed to repent more than 70 times a day? That's like every 20 minutes, even without sleep. If Muhammad slept eight or nine hours a day, but still had to repent 70 times a day, he would need to repent every 12 to 15 minutes. What was he doing? And more importantly, to whom was he doing it? Myth number seven, Islam is anti-slavery. Muslim preachers typically modify and adapt the message of Islam so that it conforms to the beliefs and values of their listeners. Hence, recognizing the racial tensions in the United States in the 1960s and seeking to win more black converts, these preachers assured their listeners that Islam is anti-slavery. In reality, Muhammad bought, owned, sold, and traded black African slaves, 
We read about a black slave of Allah's messenger in Sahih al-Bukhari. We read about Muhammad's black slave called Anjasha in Sahih al-Bukhari. We read about Muhammad's black slave who was called Middam in Sunan al-Nasai. We read about Muhammad using black slaves as a form of currency in Sunan al-Nasai. Muhammad gave a man two black slaves for one Arab slave. The Muslim sources describe this as selling animals for animals of different amounts or quality. In Provisions of the Afterlife, Ibn Qayyim al jawziyah lists 28 of Muhammad's male slaves and 12 of his female slaves. It's pretty astonishing that a man who was so vehemently opposed to slavery in the minds of Muslims had at least 40 slaves. And let's not forget that Muhammad, a man the Quran calls a beautiful pattern of conduct, would have sex with his slave girls. Oddly enough, Muslim preachers never mention any of this in their dawah. Unless, of course, they're preaching to men who want to have sex slaves someday. Then the preachers are suddenly eager to tell the truth. Myth number six. The Quran contains no contradictions. Just as Muslim preachers insist that Muhammad was perfect, they also insist that the Quran is perfect, completely free from contradiction. In reality, the Quran contradicts itself on almost every topic it addresses. For example, what did Allah create first, the heavens or the earth? According to Surah 2, verse 29, the earth was created first, then the heavens. According to Surah 79, verses 27 to 30, the heavens were created first, then the earth. How long did it take Allah to create the universe? According to Surah 7, verse 54, it took six days. According to Surah 41, verses 9 to 12, it took eight days. What is man created from? Surah 96, verse 2 says that man was created from a clot of blood. Surah 21, verse 30 says that man was created from water. Surah 16 verse 4 says that man was created from a small seed. Surah 15 verse 26 says that man was created from clay and mud. Surah 3 verse 59 says that man was created from dust. Surah 11 verse 61 says that man was created from earth. And yet, Surah 19 verse 67 says that man was created from absolutely nothing. Since the Quran is supposedly Allah's eternal speech, you'd think that eternity would be enough time for Allah to get his story straight. Myth number five, Islam is a religion of peace. After every terrorist attack carried out in the name of Allah, Muslim spokesmen are paraded across all of the major news networks and given endless platforms to assure viewers that Islam is a religion of peace and tolerance. In reality, Muhammad taught his followers to promote peace and tolerance only when it's convenient, i.e. when the Muslim community is surrounded by a more powerful enemy. So, when the Muslim community was small, Muhammad promoted peace and tolerance, and the revelations he received promoted peace and tolerance. But as soon as Islam became the most powerful force in Arabia, the message suddenly changed to fight those who do not believe in Allah. In Sahih Muslim, Muhammad proclaims, I have been commanded to fight against people till they testify that there is no God but Allah, that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and they establish prayer and pay zakat. Christians and Jews were given three options. Convert to Islam, pay the jizya, that's tribute money to acknowledge your inferior status, or be executed. Polytheists weren't so fortunate. They only had two options, convert or die. Anyone who left Islam would also be executed, as Muhammad declared in Sunan an 4067, whoever changes his religion, kill him. Islam orders its adherents to violently subjugate the entire world. If you call that a religion of peace, I can only conclude that the world you live in is opposite world. Myth number four, Islam is pure monotheism. One of Islam's biggest selling points is that it's the religion of strict monotheism, completely undefiled by pagan influences. 
In reality, Islam is saturated with pagan teachings and practices. You can only become a Muslim by reciting the Shahada, in which you profess your allegiance not only to Allah, but also to a man, Muhammad. While the word Islam means submission, the Quran claims that a person can only submit to Allah by submitting fully to Muhammad. Muslims even speak directly to Muhammad during their daily prayers, saying, Peace be upon you, O Prophet. The Quran goes so far as to claim that Allah sends his prayers upon Muhammad, whatever that means. Muslims bow down to a cubicle shrine called the Kaaba when they worship, even though the Kaaba was a center of pagan worship in pre-Islamic Arabia. Muslims who are physically and financially able are required to visit the Kaaba at least once in life. As part of their pilgrimage, they walk around the Kaaba seven times, which was a pre-Islamic pagan practice meant to honor the seven planetary deities that the pagans believed orbited the earth. Muslims also strive to kiss the black stone, a pagan rock which, according to Muhammad, is actually a conscious entity that will intercede on behalf of Muslims at the judgment. Allah isn't the only eternal being in Islam. Allah's speech, which we know as the Quran, is also eternal. Much like the black stone, the Quran is a conscious agent and it will one day appear in the form of a pale man who will intercede on behalf of Muslims at the judgment. In addition to the eternal Quran, Allah's spirit is eternal and the spirit is another conscious agent who appears in the form of a man. So we've got the eternal Allah, his conscious word that he eternally speaks and his conscious spirit that he eternally breathes out. If I didn't know better, which I don't, I'd say that this is a bad copy of the doctrine of the Trinity. But Islam rejects the doctrine of the Trinity, which means that Islam simply has three eternal conscious entities and is therefore polytheistic. When we combine this with Islam's blatant man worship and pagan stone kissing, we can see that no prophet in history has been more successful at spreading paganism than Muhammad. Myth number three, Islam promotes women's rights. As we've already seen, Muslim preachers modify and adapt the message of Islam so that it conforms to the beliefs and values of their listeners. Thus, when they preach in Western nations that promote equal rights for men and women, they insist that Islam too promotes equal rights for men and women, and even that Muhammad was a feminist. In reality, no ideology in history has had a more devastating impact on women than Islam. According to Islam, women are, by nature, stupid and immoral. Husbands can beat their rebellious wives into submission. Men can rape their female captives and slave girls. Men can hire prostitutes. Men can marry prepubescent girls. The majority of the inhabitants of hell, according to Muhammad, are women. Since ideas have consequences, it should come as no surprise that studies have repeatedly revealed a correlation between the spread of Islam and discrimination against women. For example, the World Economic Forum's 2020 Global Gender Gap Index, which ranks countries based on the magnitude of the economic gap, the education gap, the health gap, and the political gap between men and women, shows that nine of the 10 worst countries in the world for women are Muslim majority countries. 10 worst countries in the world for women are Muslim majority countries. Similarly, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development's 2019 Social Institutions and Gender Index, which ranks countries based on the levels of discrimination against women, found that 10 of the 12 worst countries in the world for women are Muslim majority countries. Of course, there is one place where the spread of Islam has improved the status of women, fantasy land. Myth number two, Islam is spreading rapidly due to conversions. When all other arguments for Islam fail, your Muslim friend is bound to proclaim but Islam is the world's fastest growing religion. Why would so many people be converting to Islam if it weren't true? The argument from rapid growth makes two major blunders. 
First, it assumes that an ideology must be true if lots of people adopt it, and this is patently absurd. Second, it assumes that the rapid growth of Islam is due to conversions. In reality, the rapid growth of Islam is primarily the result of high Muslim birth rates. Even the Pew Research report that Muslims cite to show that Islam is the world's fastest growing religion lists the primary reason for its growth. Muslims have more children than members of other religious groups. Why do Muslims have more children than members of other religious groups? Well, as we saw in our response to myth number three, Muhammad had an extraordinarily low view of women. Due to Muhammad's influence in many parts of the Muslim world, there aren't many career options for women, and educating girls is frowned upon. So girls are married off at a young age, not because it's their choice, but because that's just the way it is, and their husbands start getting them pregnant. By the time a woman in America or Great Britain is having her first child, many Muslim women of the same age are having their fifth or sixth child. Hence, if Muslim preachers were to state the argument from rapid growth accurately, it would go something like this. Islam is spreading rapidly because it turns lots of girls into baby-making machines who have nothing to do in life but spread Islam with their wombs. Therefore, Islam must be true. Perhaps we shouldn't call this the argument from rapid growth. Instead, we should call it the argument from rapid breeding. Myth number one, the Quran has been perfectly preserved. Virtually any Muslim you ever talk to will tell you that the Quran has been perfectly preserved down to the letter from the time it was revealed to Muhammad. Many Muslims will attribute this perfect preservation to the miraculous protection of Allah, who put his stamp of approval on the Quran by guarding it from corruption. In reality, the Quran was changed numerous times, even during the lifetimes of Muhammad's companions. According to Muhammad's companion Abu Musa, entire chapters of the Quran were lost because Muslims didn't recite them enough. Muhammad's companion Ubay ibn Kab said that more than 200 verses are missing from Surah 33. Some verses of the Quran even disappeared because of a farm animal. Sunan Ibn Majah, 1944. It was narrated that Aisha said, the verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the Messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came in and ate it. As a rule, if your God can't protect your book from a sheep, you probably shouldn't be boasting about miraculous preservation. But the problems didn't end there. Muhammad's top reciters couldn't even agree on which chapters were supposed to be in the Quran. The Caliph Uthman had to burn countless Quran manuscripts in order to cover up all the differences. And even today, Muslims in different parts of the world use different Qurans, not different translations, different Arabic versions of the Quran. If there's a miracle here, it's that the Quran has all the features of a book that's been changed repeatedly, and yet it's never been changed. So those are the top 10 myths Muslims believe about Islam. These myths have been propagated for a long time by deceptive preachers and apologists. Unfortunately for them, with the rise of the internet, there has never been a better time to shatter these myths. And shatter them we shall. Generations before ours got to witness some spectacular changes. Our generation gets to witness the collapse of Islam. In the comments, let me know three things. One. Do you agree with my list, and especially with my pick for myth number one? Two, can you think of any myths that should have been on this list but weren't included? And three, what other top ten lists would you like to see this year? Again, I'm in a top ten kind of mood.